Hello and welcome to It's a Jungle Out There. In this episode, we're going to find out all there is to know about ticks. <laughs> Let's have a look at these little critters. Now, lots of people may consider ticks to be similar to fleas, but in actual fact, fleas are insects and ticks are closer to spiders. Most tick species have a three-host life cycle, with each of the active forms, larva, nymph and adult, seeking a different host to feed on. First, the eggs hatch to larvae. The larvae find their first host, normally a smaller mammal such as a rabbit, and feed for several days, then drop off and molt to form the nymph. The nymph finds a second host, again a small mammal, feeds for several days and then drops off to develop into the adult. The adult then finds its third host and also reproduces. The female will take in a large amount of blood, then drop off to lay eggs to start the whole process again. Dogs and cats can become a food source during any of these life stages. This whole process can take up to three years, and during the colder months, ticks are dormant as they prefer warmer, more humid climates. And we went to the vet to find out more. Thankfully, this little stray here at the Blue Cross Victoria doesn't have any ticks, but if it did, the key thing would be to take the whole tick away. Because even if you kill the tick, you'll leave it in place, allowing it to, to basically fester and cause a what we call a foreign body reaction, make it an abscess, or tra still transmit the diseases mm -hmm. that they carry inside them. So you need to use one of these. Okay, so right imagine there. you had a tick. Oh, we tickle. <laughs> <laughs> what you'd do is you'd slide this between the tick and the body, Brilliant. and then just twist and gently pull. Like a tooth, isn't it? Exactly. Same <laughs> technique, basically. Slow and steady does the trick, and you'd be looking for the mouth box. You'd see the tick trapped in this little claw hammer here, uh, and you'd be looking very carefully with a magnifying glass to make sure that you'd got the mouth box. But obviously, the best thing to do is try and repel the ticks in the first place and don't let them bite. We have some infections like anaplasmosis here in the UK. Um, already um, that ticks transmit as they um, feed and there's also Lyme disease here in the UK. Lyme disease is um, caused by a bacteria called Borrelia burgdorferi and that bacteria is carried by a number of small um, mammals. Really tick prevention um, is, is key. Um, either by not taking the animals to particularly um, dangerous places as far as ticks are concerned or by regularly checking the animal and that's really thorough checking and then tick treatment with a repellent or a caricide. I contracted Lyme disease through my work with exotic animals. Even though I worked with animals and I dealt with ticks on the animals, I didn't know that you could contract diseases from UK ticks. I had no idea I had Lyme disease. I thought I had the flu. Over time, I began to lose weight. I had joint pains. I couldn't remember things. I couldn't work properly. It was affecting my work. When I was diagnosed, I was really shocked that I could have picked up a disease from a tick. After being hospitalized and treated several times, um, one night I went to bed with what I thought was a migraine, but when I woke the next morning um, I was effectively paralysed from a, a brain and spinal cord swelling and I've been paralysed ever since. It's essential for people to know about Lyme disease and other tick-borne diseases. They're avoidable diseases and by taking the right precautions they don't have to go through a life-changing experience like me. Ticks are arachnids, meaning they're more closely related to spiders and scorpions than insects. Tick infestations are more common in dogs than cats. Ticks feed on the blood of their hosts. This can be dogs, cats, birds and even you. Ticks can pick up diseases such as Lyme disease during feeding and pass them on to their hosts. Firstly, check your dog for ticks regularly. If you see one, remove it immediately with a tick hook yourself or go to the vet. If you walk your dog in areas like woodland or moorland, you should certainly check for ticks. What about going abroad? Well, when travelling abroad, pets may be exposed to a whole new range of parasites. Make sure you speak to your vet well in advance of your holiday 
to ensure your pet has the correct protection. Can we use repellent on our animals? Yeah, repellents are a great idea. There are a few available from collars to spot on and they work really well because they stop your pet from being bitten in the first place and possibly picking up nasty diseases. If you have any concerns at all about ticks or any other parasites, visit the itsajungle.co.uk website. There you'll find all the relevant information and can even complete a risk assessment. Once you know what parasites your pet is at risk from, you can contact your own vet who will advise you from there. So, goodbye for now. And don't forget to act.